Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. We're going to read from verses 10 through 24. Galatians chapter 1, verses 10 through 24. The title, the title of the message is, Are You a Man Pleaser? Are You a Man Pleaser? Some people might not like today's preaching. You know, it's up to you. And if you don't like it, I just tell you straight up. You don't believe in the word of God, literally. So I'll just tell you that. Revelation, not Revelation, I've been <laughs> teaching Revelation on Wednesday. So Galatians chapter 1, you know, verse 10. Are you a man pleaser? The Bible says, for do I now persuade men or God? Or do I speak, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. For I neither received it of men, neither I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many my equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. But when he pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not, Afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Sicilia and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preaches the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorify God in me. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you first of all for the salvation. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed on Calvary's cross to wash all our sins away, past, present, future. Thank you for this bible building church you have established where we can gather together to listen to your word. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the King James Bible. Lord, we yeah, thank you for the biblical sound preaching that we can hear today. We ask you that you feel Pastor Jay, with the Holy Spirit, Amen. given the liberty to preach your word unto us, hearers, and fill us with the Holy Spirit, Lord God, help us not to think about anything else besides your word, help us to put the flesh down, please yes. keep the devil away from us, Lord God, for the time being, so that we can get a blessing from your word. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, let all things be done. Please send your order for your glory. Thank you and love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Are you a man pleaser? Right away, off the bat, you shouldn't be thinking about man. You should be thinking about God. Whatever you're doing, you should think about God and the Word of God. A lot of people, they think that they can accomplish things for God using whatever method, whichever method, and whatever necessary method is required. However, in order to please God, you have to do it His way. You can't do it man's way. Right. Why is it that so many of the churches are so messed up nowadays? And I, I'm not even talking about this unsafe, you know, God-forsaking, you know, people who don't believe in the Bible, those churches out there. I'm talking about so-called fundamentalists. I'm talking about so-called Bible-believing churches, so-called independent KJV 16 only, you know, dispensationalists. You know, people have to look at their heart. They try to do it because they think that God is blessing them, but a lot of times they forget. They're doing it out of fleshly ways. 
Why is that so important? We had a jubilee, you know, great jubilee. And after camp jubilee, whenever you have a mountaintop up, I mean, experience, people go to the valley. After victory comes the greatest temptation many times. David had a you know, great victory in, back in you know, Chronicles. First Chronicles. But he had victory, but he let his guard down. And when it comes to the Ark of the Covenant, you know, one of his men touched it and died. And David was displeased with God. What happened? Did David not know all the you know, laws regarding Ark of the Covenant? He knew more about the Bible than you and I could probably understand. Yeah. He knew what was the right thing to do. Right. But what happened was that after the victory that God gave him, because he thought of it according to what some people were thinking, how the Philistines were thinking, it distorted his decision making. You could be loving God sincerely from your heart, You could be trying to do things for God sincerely from your heart. But if you don't do it by God's way, and then you're looking at people, and you're doing it trying to please man, then your spiritual decision and discernment is not going to be according to the word of God. It's going to be according to man's thoughts, man's ways, and how to please man. If you and I say we believe King James Bible and everything in it, and all the doctrines that are in it, then you have to stand for it. It doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter how their faith changes. It doesn't matter. It only matters what God thinks. Why do I have such a great respect for Pastor Senior Kim? What he preached 27 years ago, and what he preached today, and what he stands for is exactly the same. Nothing changed. Never compromised. But you know what happens to many Bible-believing Christians? You and I are no better than David. And many of the people out there, they have a stronger faith. But what happens is that you start thinking that you could do things your way. You know what? You know, Pastor Kogel preached a lot of strong messages, you know, past Jubilee, right? comes to tithing, right? right? It's in the word of God. You know? You don't want to be a God robber. I don't care if you came to our church first day or you've been here for 25 years. You don't rob God. It's standard. You just follow. Am I going to preach otherwise because I think that I'm going to offend you because you have to give tithes? then what am I? Am I trying to please man or am I trying to please God? And he comes to dress codes as well, right? Pastor Kogo was going to park there for like 30 30, 30 hours, right? (laughs) You know? Because he sees the apostasy. He sees the backsliding things as he travels the country and he's been preaching since the 70s, right? For a long, long time. I believe 46 years. What is the start, common thing, is that people want to increase the numbers and they don't want to do it by God's way. So what do they do? They bring in music and they compromise dress code. I'm telling you, when during the 50s, 60s, even 80s, when it was church day, even unsaved people, it was their best outfit they want to show to the Lord, even if they weren't saved to the God that they believed in. They had their Sunday suit. They had their ties. Ladies had their dress. Not like, you know, these whoremongering dresses that people are wearing nowadays. I mean, this disrespectful people having shorts up in the pulpit and preaching with the flip-flops. I mean, that's not how you show your honor and respect and fear of God. But people don't want to hear it. I mean, we always say, you know, we have a new Christians. 
you know, you bring him along like a little baby, right? But we're not going to compromise. We understand it's hard for you because you love your flesh. You just came out of, you know, devil's family. So it's got to be hard for you to change. Yeah. But you have to change. Amen. And have to preach that. That's right. Right? If you are meeting and during your graduation, think about your graduations that you've had in the past. Yeah. Right. School graduation, college graduation, whatever it is. Very proper gentlemen and proper ladies they wear suit, tie, and they wear dresses. Yes. Not like, you know, revealing half of your body or 75 or 90% of your body. Yeah. That nakedness. No. Because you wanted to show respect and that was a special day. To me, Lord's Day, I mean, we, because, you know, Lord was resurrected on Sunday. Woo! We meet. It's a yeah. special day. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Is it so hard to dress up with a good testimony for the Lord? I mean, what's wrong with you people out there? I mean, you come with a t-shirt, with a khaki, with a jean to a Sunday service. Like I said, you could hate me all you want. You could say I'm like, you know, Amish church. I don't care. You cannot compromise. Because once for example, I come here without the tie. Once I come here with a jean, you know what's going to happen? Every single person's going to dress like that. That's why no Bible-believing Christian should ever be a man pleaser. Amen. It's not right for you to wear earrings if you're a guy, right? Right. Amen. Okay, you take, it might take you a few months to sure. get right. Yeah. Because you just got saved. But if you've been saved for 10, 20 years, why do you have earrings? Why? Because you're carnal loving, flesh loving, backslidden Christian. That's what you are. You never want to serve God. You never want to stand for the word of God. And you're the person who hates to hear people's testimony when they get right with the Lord. And they become God-pleasers instead of man-pleasers. Because we have too many men-pleasers inside the church. That's why their church split. That's why there's constant gossiping. That's why people never grow. Because all you want to do is please man. Yeah. And it doesn't, inc- I mean, it doesn't exclude preachers. Even I myself have to be very careful. Because I've seen it too many times. When, for example, like, you know, Pastor Kim started with, like, two people, right? You know, and then had to grow, right? But they were, you know, up and down, up and down, up and down. So I see, like, Jubilee, we place was full. We praise God for it, obviously. But maybe next time it's half full. Does that mean God's not working? No. As long as the man of God is following and not compromising and stand for the truth, yep. it's fine. Yes. Why so many churches backslide? Because they want that money. Money, money, money. That's true. Right? Love of money, root of all evil. That's yes. Do you make your decision based on money? You know, I could definitely increase church numbers. I could make it overflow if I smile like Joe Austin every Sunday. (laughs) And if I share like Joe Austin every Sunday, right? And if I don't talk anything about sin, I don't talk anything about, you know, you getting right with the Lord, hey, then I'll be a very good persuader of man. But you know who didn't care for persuading men much? You know who wasn't fearful of preaching at all? Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Apostle Paul, John Wesley, Martin Luther. Human approval never meant anything to them. Human approval should never mean anything to you. Only God's approval should be that matters to you. Yes, sir. Then right people will come along. 
Why is it that you always want human approval first? That's why you get into trouble. Forget about human approval. When Lord Jesus Christ preached about hell, preached against Pharisees and Sadducees, right? You think he cared about their approval? I mean, why is it that so many Christians, all they care about is approval, approval? Why? Because we live in a backslidden state. I mean, state. No man seeking to persuade man goes around and tells them like it is. Why do we get criticized so much as a Bible-believing church? Because we criticize preachers who send people to hell Amen. and who damn people from growing because they don't teach the right doctrine. Right. Why do people don't think we persuade men? Because we tell them. You can't do anything to save yourself. Yeah. You can't do anything. That's right. Only by grace of God you can be saved. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Man who is trying to persuade men, so-called politicians, spends his time always trying to flirt, flatter people. That's it. It's okay to say hi. It's okay to have a good fellowship. But am I going to change my ways because I need you to be here every Sunday? Am I going to conform to your ways because you have deep pockets? Because you're like my family member? I mean, you could ask my brother. I mean, if we thought about family and then, you know, went with the worldly ways, we wouldn't be here today. I mean, God tested us right away. Are you going to choose your family or are you going to choose me? I mean, by grace of God, we chose God. And that's why we're here. I mean, am I going to try to get approval of my family, so I'm going to change my ways of serving God? I mean, am I going to neglect being servant of Christ? Look at it. If you want to persuade man, then you become non-servant of Jesus Christ. That's it. I mean, that's what the verse says in verse 10. For if I yet please man, I should not be the servant of Christ. What are your goals as a Christian? Do you want to just please people? Oh, yeah, you know, that sister, that brother, you know. I'm just going to say whatever they want to hear, only. I want them to be happy. You know? And especially going around a lot in the pulpit. Oh, man, that brother, you know, he teaches, he preaches, you know. He's so faithful and gung at the church, you know. I'm, I'm going to try my best not to offend that brother, you know. He had issues with tithing. So I'm not going to preach against tithing, you know. Oh, she had issues with dress code, you know, dressing modestly. Oh, so I'm not going to preach it because I do not want to miss that person coming to church. Who are you, who are you trying to please Kill it. when you have that kind of mindset? Are you trying to please man or are you trying to please God? Come on. The common theme is that you don't want to follow the word of God if you're a man pleaser. Yeah. You don't want to. Don't give me this baloney that I, you know, you know, they're baby in Christian. Hey, then are you going to cater to every single baby in the world? <laughs> then how the world's going to turn out to be? Yeah. Upside I mean, we have a lot of babies in, you know, stores out there. Amen. Acting like babies to their parents. Buy me that, buy me that, buy me that. I hate you, I hate you. And they're the ruler of the universe. Then what do you think church is going to turn out to be? When you conform to man pleasers, what happens? When you become man pleaser, church just becomes a room full of crying babies. Yeah. Amen. If you ever go to Ikea, they have like a, I guess like a nursery room for all the babies, yes. right? Our church have nursery room too, right? Just go there <laughs> if you're not pleased, man. Because you could really have a lot of fun. You could cry all you want. You could yell all you want. You could jump all you want. You could hit somebody all you want until someone stops you. You could spit all you want. You know, you could throw up all you want. 
and you're just going to be a baby all your life. Yeah. That's who you are as a man pleaser. And again, I'm not excluding myself. It starts from the pulpit. It starts from the preachers. When preachers start compromising and don't stand for the perfect word of God, don't stand for what is right, and you give an inch or even a millimeter to undoctrinal, people-pleasing ways, you're just going to go down. Man, devil's always seeking that. Devil wants to see a compromiser in any way. Devil wants to see preachers out there who care more about human feelings than the Word of God, who care more about people's face, facial expressions, than what the Bible says. I could have Brother Richard frowning at me 24-7, but I'm going to still preach Amen. what the Bible says. Stop. Yeah. I mean, he could even give me the most evilest eye to me. It doesn't matter, right? You know, I'm still going to preach what the Bible says. I mean, you learn, right? You follow how the preachers in the past preached, right? Yes. They're hated by many people, especially so-called Christians. But do you think God ever disappointed them? Did God ever disappoint you when you pleased him instead of man? You were many times disappointed when you pleased man, tried to, sure. rather than God. Yeah. It is very important. Don't look at numbers. Don't look at statures. Don't look at your situation. You just have to, like Hebrews chapter 12, looking unto Jesus. That's it. Amen. That's all you have to look at. If I'm looking at him, rest of the things fills up as needed. What's most important in your life? Right? To survive. You just need things that you need. People survive in the mountains. Do you think they ask for a stove and an oven and a microwave? You know, when you're in the wilderness trying to survive? No, they just need some food. They just need some shelter. They just need some, you know, clothes. Bare you know, minimum. bare minimum. And then they go on and on and live there. Yes. I mean, think about people in Alaska, out in the remote areas, right? They have no electricity. They don't have running water. But they seem to be doing pretty well, right? But as Christians, why is it that you need more than what you need? Why do you always ask for more than what you need? I mean, aren't you satisfied? I'm going to be him, right? Aren't you satisfied? I mean, if the Lord blesses you more than your needs, bless God, amen, right? Yes. I'm pretty sure the Lord said that, hey, man, you could handle it, you know. And I've never preached about tithe. Well, I never mentioned it much, right, if, you ever, if you've been listening to me for a long time. But the subject came up because of Jubilee. Subject came up because of people are so concerned about their pockets, not trying to give it to God, they're missing all the blessings. And they're trying to be so technical about it. Right? People always say, where does it say in the New Testament? Right? I mean, do you really want to rob God and you feel like you're going to be happy the rest of your life? You're not. I mean, it's a spiritual blessing that you're just missing. Again, going back to how Apostle Paul, you know, Lord Jesus Christ, they preach without fear or favor. I'm sorry, brethren, if I don't show favor to you, because that's not the how you run the ministry. You run, run ministry with favoritism. Don't be sad. If I don't pat on your back every Sunday, good job, brother. Or if I say to you, yeah, man, any sister, like, oh, you've been a great sister to every sister in the ministry. I mean, who should commend you at the end? Lord Jesus Christ. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. So you and I have to constantly ask ourselves, are you a man pleaser? Am I here to please men? Oh, am I here to please God? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Starting from verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. 
You want to obey commandments of the Lord rather than man. Amen. You want to please the Lord rather than man. Let's look at it. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12, the Bible says, For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that command themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. So stop comparing. Right? And don't even compare like what happened in the past to now. Now it's different. We have so many people say, you know what, in the past we have 500 members in the church. But now you have like 30. So what? Is God not working in the ministry? Is God not using you if you still did the same thing, everything same? But the world's going haywire. People are giving up their faith and they're backsliding. And, you know, it's a natural thing that, you know, there's going to be less and less Bible-believing Christians. Sure. I mean, what do you expect? Yeah. I mean, Bible already predicted it. Yes, amen. So are you going to be like this person, you know, who gets shocked by what's happening? I mean, if you know the Bible... You know, it is exactly what's going to happen. Yes. And it's happening. Amen. I mean, let's continue. Verse 13. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God has dis distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly, to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand. But he that glorious, let him glory in the Lord. For not he that commandeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commandeth. You just want to be approved by the Lord. Let the Lord command you. If your family never commands you, it's okay. Let the Lord command you. You don't need approval from your family to please God. I don't need your approvals to please God. No one should need anybody's approval to please God. Your commendation from the Lord comes from the Lord. It's not from me. It's not from people around you. So forget about pleasing men. Once and for all, just stand for what is right. No more. If you're the only one sitting there next week, it's fine. Lord gets all the glory. Amen. Let people do what they want to do, but don't let it affect you and the ministry. Yeah. It's your faith Amen. that's most important yes, with the Lord. It's not the person next to you. No, sir. People always look at other people's faith. That's why when they hear preaching, they know it's not for them. It's for the person next to them. Or it's for the person behind them. Yeah. That's why they, <laughs> it's comical. When they hear some strong preaching, they start looking around. They're like, you know, they're like, I, they know it's for them, but like, oh, you know. I knew, I knew, I knew that, that sister. Right I, I knew that sister. Yeah, I know she has right. some foul mouth, you know. Man, I knew that brother, you know. You know, I, I, I held my tongue for a while, but I'm glad, you know, pastor's preaching against him, right? Yeah. Do you think with that kind of mindset and heart, you will glory in the Lord? No. You will never glory in the Lord. You will always glory in yourself and the flesh. That's why it was great to see when Pastor Kim, Pastor Kogo, and Pastor Cronin, for 30 years, they've been friends and, you know, brothers, and they've known each other, right? Nothing changed. 30 years plus. I know you've known a lot of people for 30 years, if you're old enough, right? Maybe you've known someone for all your life, your childhood friend and stuff. How many people actually stay the same? Many people change. A lot of times it's because of family, relationship, because of finances, you know, jobs, and everything. Many, majority of the people change, right? Yes. 
But those three men did not change, especially when it came to faith, standing up for what's right. And that's the question that you and I should be asking. I mean, have we changed since you've gotten saved, right? Have you been changed since you found out the truth? Perfect word of God and the right doctrine. Have you been avoiding certain parts of the word of God because it was too much for you? Have you stopped preaching it because you are part of the crowd that enjoys that sin? Have you stopped preaching the gospel to certain people because that would displease them? I mean, if someone like Apostle Paul was only thinking about being servant of men and like being like a politician, he wouldn't have been the person who he was, greatest Christian ever lived. He'd have been, I don't know, like Billy Graham at the end of his life, when all this political point from almost all the religions, is that what you want? Is that what your legacy should be? Amazing thing about some of the best preachers who stay constant, who never compromise. They never made effort to adjust their message. Dr. Ruckman made no effort to adjust his message. He told it like it is. Seven, 1970 message was same as 20. 2,000 message, right? That 30, 40 years, you hear it then, you hear it now, same. Maybe even stronger, right? Yes. When you hear these type of messages, what goes through your heart? Are you standing stronger in the Lord? Or are you trying to please God more? You're getting deeper, spiritually speaking, in your growth? Or are you like that person who backslid in so much that you're always thinking about, man, how am I gonna, is this going to affect how I deal with other men? Right? Because I think you and I have been baby too much. In this politically correct society, Obviously, you and I have to be wise about certain things, right? You know, you don't go to your company that you work for, suddenly go up to CEO, you're going to burn in hell you know, if you don't trust Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. I mean, you pray for the right opportunity to do it, right? Off working hours too, right? You know, don't, don't mistake in, you know, your zeal with, you know, stupidity, right? You got to be wise about it. But think about it. I mean... Do I ever adjust my message? It could be one-on-one -on -one message. It could be preaching. You know, whatever it is, right? When you're telling story, you're t doing a testimony. Do you ever adjust your message just because of your listeners when it comes to truth? You know, don't get mistaken. When it comes to the perfect truth, do you adjust what the Bible says because of your listeners? Do you suddenly take out the word hell when you're preaching because it offends that person? I mean, when I see you during street preaching, you preach hell? But when you're by yourself, do you take it out because it's going to offend that person? You should never, ever adjust the truth. You will always get into trouble when you adjust the truth. I mean, not even just the perfect word of God. I mean, why do people always get in trouble with each other? But they don't tell the truth and the whole truth. Why do people hate lawyers, right? They adjust the truth, right? Why do people really, really don't like politicians? Man, they are just everything. 
truth, faith, everything, right? They're, I mean, every part of their life, right? Yes. Then how are you and I different from those sleazy politicians out there right. as a Bible-believing Christian when we adjust our message, when we adjust truth, when we adjust what we stand for? You and I are not here to influence Christians, right, to be good Christians. That's not our goal. Our goal is to just tell the truth. Yeah. You don't have to tell me good. You could hate me. But if I told you the truth, I've done my job. Right? Yes. You don't have to try to look good on every single person. It's not a popularity contest. I mean, in the ministry, it's not a popularity contest. <laughs> Can you imagine if churches turn into a school election days, right? Everybody gone through some kind of, you know, things where kids are trying to win someone's vote, right? Here's more lemonade for you or something, right? Oh, yeah, you know, that class, we should abolish it. It's so hard for everybody. You know, we should have more PE, you know, our break time should be longer, you know, all that stuff. And then you don't study as much, you become more dummy, I mean, dumber, you know, yes. like those things. Like, they want to hear, they have itching ears, right? I mean, as a man pleaser, you love to be that itching ear. And you always follow that itching ear crowd, right? You only want to hear what you want to hear. Even though truth is there and truth hurts many, many times, when you try to avoid hurt, then you never grow. So accept it. I mean, Christians, I mean, brethren, you just have to accept it. I have to accept it. You know, I cannot serve God and mammon at the same time. I can't. You know, I just have to make up my mind if I haven't already. You have to make up your mind if you haven't already. Like, you know, I'm just going to serve God. I don't care what man would do unto me because the Lord's on my side. Amen. At the judgment seat of Christ, I think the saddest thing will be to see people who please men more than the Lord. People who please men than the Lord who died for them. People who please men more than the Lord who lives within them. People who please men more than the Lord who gave you everything in your life. Don't let emotions get in the way. You and I have constant temptation of pleasing people. Constant. Because you want to be approved by people. But at what cost? At what cost? If I have to lose my family to please the Lord, I have to do it. If you have to lose a family to please the Lord, you have to do it. You have to lose your job to please the Lord, you got to do it. You have to lose something, anything, you have to do it for the Lord. I mean, he gave up everything. Yes. He shed his precious blood. I mean, literally, God himself gave everything up for you. And me. At the end, that pleased God the Father. He has someone to please. You and I have someone to please. And it's, that's God. Don't let any little emotions, you know, get in the way. Right? Amen. Just let the fact speak for itself from now on. I mean, if you've been afraid, find courage in the Word of God. Yes. I mean, if you thought, you know, the way people look at me is most important, forget about it if you're doing it the right way, right? It doesn't matter. I mean, if you're the only one dressed perfectly, you know, out of, you know, respect, but everybody else is wearing shorts and, you know, flip-flops, be it. You don't have to conform to them, right? I mean, the last thing you and I should be known as is someone who conforms to this world. 
I want to be known as someone who went against the tithe, who went against what this apostate you know, Christianity has become. Amen. You, know, you don't like our music? Go somewhere else. Right? Yes. You don't like how our local church is run? Go somewhere else. Yes. Why you would stay here and complain? <laughs> There's a lot of places out there who will, you could conform, who they have conformed as well. But as long as you're here, oh, yeah. think about it. Why are you here? Because you want to please God. Yes. Because you know the man of God here, their heart is set out. And one man of God is heart is set out to please God. Amen. That's why they're here. And sometimes, just like when you were growing up as a child, your parents might tell you things that you don't want to hear. But it's for your own good. How are you going to receive it? Children who listen to their parents, especially when they're lecturing them in the right way, they grow up to be a you know, good, good man and woman. Yes. People reject those counsel. People reject those, you know, punishment here and there. What, where, what do they become? They usually become, you know, bad people. Yes. End up in jail, you know, good for nothing, or they become sleazy or whatnot. You know, just statistical-wise, there's always exception to the rule. Then, as a Christian, as a Bible-believing Christian in a local church, are you going to get rid of that man-pleasing once and for all? You got to kick it, right? You got to kick it out of your life. Like, kick it out of your Amen. life. Because it's coming every single day. Don't think that just because you kicked it today, it's going to be gone, you know? When you kick that man-pleasing A out, man-pleasing B will step in. That's right. You got to keep on kicking it, right? But you got to keep on. It's just like athlete. You have to do it consistently. Yeah. consistently. You want to be a good shooter in basketball? You got to keep on shooting. You got to be a good, you know, kicker in soccer. You know, you got to keep on kicking, right? You want to be a good boxer? You got to keep on punching, right? Yes. You got to continue to do it every single day. Then it's a great reminder for us. If you and I want to be a servant of Christ, our job is not to be a man pleaser. Our goal, and from bottom up, our heart, it should be to please man. And whatever the Word of God says, Whatever the right doctrine is, no matter however someone reacts, you're just going to stick with it. Stick with the doctrine. Stick with the Word of God. Yes, sir. Amen. Lose people, lose close ones, family, or whatnot, doesn't matter. You stand up for what's right. Amen. And Lord's going to reward you. I guarantee you from you know, your own experience, from my own experience, when you choose God over man, he double blesses you. A lot of times more than you could even count. Sometimes physically, but many times spiritually. Right? Isn't that what you want? Yes. Right? In this wicked world where everybody thinks everything should be, you know, backwards and Christianity is going backwards, right? Sooner or later, I mean, if you even talk about God, if you even talk anything against the you know, what the globalists are saying, you and I might be going to jail, right? Sure. There's going to be persecution. I mean, wouldn't you want to suffer for the Lord the right way Amen. by standing Amen. up for him, by pleasing him, then suffer the wrong way because you're pleasing man? Yeah. Right? The choice is yours. Whether you're a child, whether you're grown up, whether you're elderly or anything in between, right? Whether you're being a new Christian, you've been an old Christian, whether you're a preacher, pastor, your teacher, whoever you are, your choice is always yours and choice is mine. Am I going to please man? Am I going to be a man pleaser? Or am I going to please God? Let's pray. Dear Father, we go, go on with our Christian walk. And when we let our cars down, we literally go towards the path of just seeking approval of human beings instead of you, Lord God. Help us to understand that 
What's most important in our life is bringing glory to you. What's most important in our life is this perfect word of God you've given to us, King James Bible 1611, and do what he says. Believe what he says and preach what he says and leave what he says. I pray that all of us will reflect the way we walked in our Christian walk. If there are any part of our life where we've been trying to please man instead of pleasing you, help us to confess and get right with you. And from now on, help us to walk this Christian walk, this battle, spiritual battle that we go through every single day, just pleasing you instead of pleasing man. I pray that you'll be with everyone here and who's listening, especially those who are physically not doing well, Lord. Heal them according to your will. And I pray that you come soon, Lord. Even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.